Okay, my new telescope has arrived, and this is uh, what I plan on replacing my SET with. I wasn't planning on getting a new scope until next year, but I saw somebody with this scope on YouTube, and they corrupted me. You know who you are, Jeff. But uh, it's exactly the range I was looking for. An Explorer Scientific Refractor with a 950 focal length. Uh, and the price I thought was very reasonable. I saw this model with the carbon fiber option, which was $1,000 more, and I didn't want to spend that much. I didn't even know this model existed until I saw Jeff's video. Like, ah, oh, that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to open the box up and see what it looks like. Well, here is the new scope. Explorer Scientific. And... I try if I remember what the spec said I think it's 22 pounds with and if I put the ST80 on top of it I'm probably looking at uh, uh, well 20 the ST80 plus I'm gonna have a moonlight focuser that's on the way probably arrive in a few days so I think the total weight is probably gonna be pushing close to 30 pounds when I'm all done luckily my CGX can handle a payload maximum of 55 pounds and I've heard people can actually push push that very close to the limit and still guide well now the handle of course that's got to go that's where my guide scope is going to go so I'm going to get rid of the handle and I'm going to get longer mounting bars it comes with a very short mounting bar but I I've got a 14 I ordered a 14 inch uh, Vixen bar for the bottom and uh, of course, I'll be removing the focuser when my moonlight focuser arrives. But in the meantime, I think I'm still going to take it out. It might be clearer again tonight. So I'll probably just try it on a few targets, not do any serious astrophotography. I don't like to go all night without a, my electronic focuser. I'm spoiled with that stuff now. So um, I'm going to get this on my CGX and see what balancing it will be like. I've, I've never had a scope. Well, actually, I have had a scope this long. That one, my Newtonian. But anyway, all right, I'll be back. Well, here it is. It is loaded on my CGX mount. And um, it wasn't that hard to balance. With refractors, all you have to do to find balance, really, is you just slide, loosen the, the tube rings, and you just slide the telescope up and down until you find a good balance point. And my ST80 is held on now with three tube rings. I got one for the 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 camera too. Uh, it'll hold the extension in place so nothing wobbles back there. So that hopefully there's less flexure going on there. The only thing that concerns me right now is when I rotate it, when I loosen the clutches on the mount, the telescope does bang in to the the back tripod legs. And I, I've got to figure this out. Maybe I can um, rotate my mount differently so that uh, the telescope won't bang into the legs. Um, uh, that's going to be a big problem. Or I'm going to have to get some kind of pier or something that will raise the mount higher and keep the, the telescope away from the legs. So, um, But uh, we'll see how this takes pictures if I can figure out how to keep the telescope from banging into the tripod. Okay, I'll see you later. All right, it is dark out here, and I just spent the last half hour trying to find focus. As expected, I had to go really far back to find focus. And what I did is I've got my Hotec flattener here, and I took off the extension part of my Orion reducer so I, I used half of the Orion reducer there, and I've got another extension here to, to get me finally in focus. That That is a long way back. And you know, you would think that um, they would anticipate you were going to have this kind of issue, and they would include extra pieces. But I've got a, I may do, I figured it out, trying to, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, but I did it. And I found focus. 
and now I've got to rebalance because I moved the camera so far back and after I rebalance maybe I can start taking some test shots okay see you later well I am imaging I didn't think I'd get to this point tonight considering I had to figure out how to balance the scope uh, find the focus make sure the scope doesn't bang into the tripod legs which it still may do but on the bright side I noticed the mount itself kind of assumes you might have a long scope and so it maneuvers from object to object I was testing it out it goes from object to object and, and it maneuvers in a way to stay away from the tripod legs that's what I'm noticing but I still don't trust it so I'm, I'll find a solution to avoid those tripod legs but anyway I'm gonna just take photos of a bunch of different objects tonight. Maybe I'm going to try 10 photos on Pac-Man, maybe try the Wizard, uh, maybe try the Fireworks Galaxy or the Deer Lake Galaxies. I'm just going to be trying HA and my uh, broadband CLS data just to try it out. I'm not going to go for um, all the filters, not until I get my Moonlight Focuser, which should arrive on Monday. I don't even know if I'll hold focus tonight. You never know, even if it's a new scope, you, you can't trust these focusers. So, anyway, let's take a look at that one raw image so far. And that's Pac Man. Um, that's pretty much what I expected the size of it to be in this scope. And the mean readout um, is 627. Normally, uh, my SCT was a little lower, so that's pretty good. I like it. I'd rather have it a little higher at three minutes. And um, I want to stack a few, and I've already captured some flats. I'll stack a few and, and see what they look like. Okay, uh, I think that's all I've got for now. Um, yeah, okay, I'll be back. Hey, I just wanted to check in on my guiding right now, and at uh, 0 0.45 is even better than I thought it would be for this kind of uh, telescope. I thought for sure I would have balance issues, and it would be thrown off, and who knows. Um, I'm really surprised that guiding is this good, for, considering this is my first try playing around with this mount. I mean, with this telescope. Okay. I'll see you later. Hey, it turned out to be a rather productive night. I was surprised. I tried my scope on four different objects, an hour each, and they don't look too bad. Um, actually, it, was, it would have been five objects, but the last hour of data was total crap. A fog had rolled in, and the data just looked bad. And when I woke up, the fog was really thick here. And so this is how Pac-Man came out. That was the first object I captured, and that this one was a narrowband, HA. But I also wanted to try some broadband. And so let's close that one. So this is the Fireworks Galaxy. And uh, these are all processed. I only spent maybe five minutes processing each one. I didn't want to spend a lot of time because I'm going to go back to these and do color. But uh, the Fireworks Galaxy came in pretty strong. I was... I was okay with that one. Now, the stars don't look that great, and I forgot to do something. When I, there's supposed to be 35 millimeter of spacing between my field flattener and my camera, and I forgot to put that those spacers on, which is probably why I had to use two extensions last night. Didn't even occur to me. I completely forgot. So I could probably take off one of the extensions and put the spacers back on, so my camera will still be, still be that far back. But without the spacer, I, I don't think my field flattener was being was as effective as it could be. Anyway, okay, let's look at the next picture. This is M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, and uh, this is the third object of the night. And I didn't go frame by frame, but it's possible by now. I, my uh, with the I think the fog getting a little bit thicker, or, or maybe my focuser maybe slipping a little, I'm not sure, but the stars look a little bigger than they should be right now, so maybe I'm starting to lose focus. I don't have my Moonlight Focuser yet, but it's on the way, and it should arrive soon. But I still like how the galaxy looks. I always thought M33 is a bit of a sloppy, unorganized looking galaxy, but it's there, it is big, so it's, it's still cool. 
And let, let's close that. And that's the, the Pleiades. Now, I'm not going to actually try and capture the Pleiades when I want the colored image on, on this scope. Uh, this is a big star cluster. Uh, and it has way more stars than the seven sisters they always talk about. So I need a wide field uh, telescope to get the, the whole star field. That's what I'm going to do. But you can see I was starting to pick up some of the dust. But I didn't like this. I could, you know, I'm not a big fan of halos. And I can see obviously each star has that little circular halo going on around there, even here. I like all the dust that, that shows through with the one hour of data, though. And this was the last object I captured for the night. So I'm probably out of focus by now. It doesn't matter. I still think it was a good run for the, you know, the telescope arrives and the same day I get to, to use it. Normally, if you get new equipment like that, you got to wait a week. Of, you, get, you get a week of clouds with it. You know, everybody has that, that joke. But I got lucky. I got to use it on the first day. But now we're in for some clouds the next couple of days. So that'll give, give me time for the Moonlight Focuser to arrive. That'll be the third Focuser I have. Now, I've got one on my, my uh, wide field scope, my SCT, and now this new scope. And... I, I think, uh, and I know for refractors, you can just change the, the flange and, and just move the focuser from scope to scope. But I, I don't really want to deal with that. I just like having one on each scope. So that's that's the scoop. Thanks for watching. I think I have a solution now for the, by the way, for the, the with the telescope banging. It, it, it didn't happen last night, but it is possible that the telescope could bang into the tripod legs. But... I've, I've got a way to, to put on those counterweights so on the rear end, which will allow me to scoot the telescope forward and stay away from those tripod legs. So I'm pretty confident that will be solved. Okay, well, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you later.